Captain, sit up. Captain, sit up. Sit up. Sit up. That's the boy. Now shake hands. Come on, shake hands. How do you do? Say, Mary, I don't pay you to play with my dogs. I pay you to fix up my books. I've been through with them for half an hour, Mr. Gilmore. I'm waiting for Red to take me back to town. Aren't they beautiful? I think they're a darn nuisance. And there'll be a lot more bother when Lady has her pup. Don't you worry about that, Mr. Gilmore. When that happens, I'll be here night and day. Aren't I beautiful? Well, I wish someone else had them. Hello, son. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Wouldn't I just love to have you for yourself? Say, Mary, I could use some of that affection myself. Now, Joe, don't tell me you're jealous. No, no. So how about taking you to the dance Saturday night? No. I'm sorry. Well, why not? Because you got drunk at the last dance. <laughs> well, I won't drink this time. Honest, I won't, Mary. Baloney, that's what you said last time. I've got it. How about a dance right now? Right here. Oh, behave, Joe. Don't. Oh, please, stop. Don't. You're hurting me. Please, that's, don't. That's a fiction, oh. Mary. <laughs> Take care of that. I'm sorry, Joe. You've got a mighty good cut on your neck. That's all right, Dad. Nice, Captain. We can't go around taking bites out of people we don't like. Joe hasn't done anything to you, Captain. Mm. Besides, you want to watch out who you're biting. You might get hydrophobia. Hello, Mary. Come on over. We've got a new Romeo and running spring. Hello, Rep. Mary, I want you to meet John Z. Blake. I don't know what the Z stands for, but I've been a devil in him to find out ever since we left the railroad station. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Blake? <laughs> How do you do, Miss... Uh... Carson. Like in Kit Carson, you know. So at last I'm in the Wild West. Not so very wild. He's a barrister, <laughs> Mary. That's French for lawyer. Hello, Joe. Got a little competition with Mary now. Joe Gilmore, I want you to meet John Z. Blake. He's going to practice law up here, Joe. Never had any trouble around here, but I suppose we will now that we've got a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with your hand, Joe? Bite yourself? You're mean enough to. No, a dog bit me. Well, why don't you feed them? They'll get sick eating off of you. <laughs> Hop in, Mary. I'll take you to town for a nickel. All right. Starting in to beat your time already, Joe. Will I see you at the dance Saturday night, Mary? No, I don't think so, Joe. Sorry. She'll probably be tripping the light fantastic with John Z. Romeo Saturday night. Now, that's an idea. <laughs> you can't compete with them their store clothes, Joe. Go on in and wash your neck. Giddy up, Henrietta. <laughs> trying to do. I'll break that dog's neck for going after me like that. Say, we got to get rid of them dogs, Joe. You're right. I'll tell you. 
You take them down to Carl Sanderson's place. Just tell the side Coyote well. Yeah, I see myself taking them dogs on a 90-mile trip, huh? Well, he told me once he wanted them, that he'd pay for them when he got the money. I guess that's the best we can do with them. I'm not taking them. Oh, now, go on. You can muzzle them. We can't keep them around here no more. Say, maybe Mary take them and pay me later. No, Sanderson's better. I'll take him. this time, Mary. That Z arouses too much curiosity around here. And besides, the secret in my shameful past. Well, you can't blame us, John. Us long hairs are always interested in city slickers. You know, I can't figure you out. You're not my idea of a small town girl, and yet you tell me you've never been out of the state. Listen, mister. First, we get all the best magazines in Boscombe's drugstore. Second, we all have radios. Third, we see the new movies. I tell you, I'm just about two jumps ahead of those gals in the East. I believe it. And the more I see of you, the better I like running spring. <laughs> yes, sir, mister. To know us is to love us. Now, uh, how about buying me an ice cream soda? Aha! Uh -huh. There's gold diggers in these yar hills. Don't women ever think of anything but food? <laughs> Bite me, will you? Go on. Shooting's too good for you. Try to chew me up, will you? But it won't chew much of anything with them muzzles on. And if you find any water, you're welcome to it. If you find it.
Got a new dress, Mary? Oh, stranger. There ain't no law again the lady robin bedecking herself in the spring be there. No, but she should let the gentleman robin help her pick it out. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hello, Mary. Hello, Blake. I tried to get you on the phone, Mary, but I'll be over for you tonight about eight anyhow. Too late, Joe. The lady's spoken for. Well, what's the idea? We've been going to those dances regular every Saturday night. Hi there, romance. Looks like I can add a Juliet to my Romeo. You can't fool old Cupid Reb. How'd you like to mind your own business? Wait a minute, Joe. I've got something to tell you. Well, I've got a buyer for them police still in It's too late. They're already sold. Did you find a good home for them, Joe? They're such grand dogs. You'd love them, John. Say, you're telling me why. When I was a kid, I used to pick up Did every... Did I find a good home for them? They're out in the desert where they've got lots of room to run in. Well, you couldn't find a better spot for a couple of dogs like them. I didn't know you cared so much for dogs, Joe. Sure, but uh, I don't make a fuss over like some people, that's all. Just for that, I'll give you three dances tonight. Come along, John. I've got to get home and lengthen that dress. All right. Come along, Joe. So I'll take you out and see Captain Lady sometime, Mary. You do. I'll bet you make her buy the gas for the car. So long, dog food. Anymore. You know what day this is, huh? I know you've been drinking again. But no, this is our wedding anniversary. You see, you remember what we had to eat for our wedding supper, huh? I ought to know. I cooked it. You had sea fried chicken yourself. You see, that's just what we're going to have tonight for supper. Fried chicken. Now, come on. I want to show you. There they are. Where? All right, the... Say, they was there. Four of them. Friars. Sure, it wasn't for a bottle of his saw. Darned if they didn't take my sack, too. Hmm. Look. Looks like a dog. Or a big coyote. Wait till I get my gun. Watch me. I got him! Four or five weeks now since we've been missing chickens around here. Funny that dog don't steal none of the chickens. Nothing else to steal around here but chickens. Might get a rabbit. Maybe he don't like rabbits. Why? Hair might get in his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Be running springs is getting famous the Los Angeles paper. Listen to this fellow Harry Carr's editorial column. Dog makes monkey of ranchers. Wild Bill Hickok would turn over in his grave if he knew what was happening around his old stomping ground running springs. 
The mighty plainsmen and reputed trackers who now inhabit this once proud town of the frontier are completely baffled, nay, defeated by a police dog. The dog, evidently a renegade, is one smart hombre, and he demonstrates it almost nightly by raids on the chicken ranches near Running Springs. They've never tried him on caviar. Say, what is caviar? Them fish eggs. Who ever heard of a dog eating fish eggs? It ain't exactly what you'd call favorable publicity, but it is publicity. That may seem funny to you, but this thing has got to be doggone serious. Only three nights ago he raided us. Never killed but two or three, but he left the gates open. Forty of my best hens took to the hill. Been chasing chickens ever since. Heck, I dressed them clean, my four he took. Well, I ain't raising chickens from Mr. Dog's belly. I'm sneaking around my place, I'll blow his brains out. If that don't work, I got a chicken loaded with arsenic. And had it ready for him for two nights. Think I'll go home and see if I got any luck. You missed him. When he eats that chicken, he'll be dead in an hour. place at six o'clock last night. Oh. What'd you do? You remember me telling you about that chicken stuff? Man, sure. we've got to do something about this dog. Oh, well, I fixed him, Mr. Endicott. He got a poison chicken at my place last night at six o'clock. Yes. Well, he raided my pens and two of my prize winners this morning at seven o'clock, broad daylight. And he was pretty lively for a dead dog. What we've got to do is organize. Hunt him down. Oh. Now, I've got an idea how this thing can be handled and just where we can go and get it. I've got money invested here, and I'm going to protect it. Besides, we're the laughing stock of the countryside. We've got to bring in this dog, this chicken murderer. You're right. Let's go get him. Well, now the precious trail leads from my place, so we'll start from there. Come on, men.
Good boy. <laughs> Dog, a big Say, you been swimming? Dog? Swimming? Yeah, it's a chicken thief. We're after it. Yes, I saw a dog. Which way did he go? He went right back the way you came. Oh, we must have missed him. Come on, fellas. Thanks. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, fella. Come on. Come on, fella. That's a big idea. Thanks, pal, but don't expect me to split the reward with you. Let that dog go. Not a chance. What are you doing? Just singing to the boys. Now I'm going to take care of the dog. The reward says dead or alive, and dead suits me just fine. Go. Yeah, but no thanks to your friend here. He gave us a bum steer. That right, Blake? Yes, it is. This is the dog that saved my life, and I'm not going to see you shoot him down without a chance. Listen, Blake, this dog has destroyed valuable property. You don't know it was this dog. You've no right to kill him. He's valuable property, too. Say, we're not putting a chicken stealing dog on trial, are we? Why not? It's been done before. You read about that case down in San Bernou, didn't you, Mr. Endicott? Yes, but that ain't got nothing to do with this. You shoot this dog, and if he's the wrong one, I'll take the case and sue you and win more damages than you've lost already. Now think it over. Sounds crazy to me. What about it, fellas? Well, I don't know. There's a chance it ain't the same dog. All police dogs look alike to me. All right, Blake, this will satisfy everybody. You be in Judge Simmons' court Wednesday morning with this dog. You're responsible for him. I'll swear out the complaint myself. And if he's the dog we're after, it's going to be just too bad. I'll have him there, Mr. Endicott. Didn't have a case on the calendar and was all set to go fishing, and you come along with your doggone dog. You <laughs> laugh again like that, and I'll find you for contempt of court. There isn't anything so unusual, Your Honor. I have a precedent in this case. You can't make me believe that any court in its right mind went lollygagging around with dogs. Oh, yes. In the case of the People versus Ranger, right here. In this case, the dog was arrested just like a human up in Wyoming. He was convicted and killed for stealing cattle and killing calves. Later, they found it wasn't him at all. Well, all right, but we're going to drop regular legal formalities, and you say what you've got to say, 
Jake, you're the prosecuting attorney up here. You say what you got to say. Gentlemen and jury, you uh, just listen. Gentlemen and the jury, gaze on the defendant. This here's the complaint. It's a long one, so I'll tell you in my own words. What I can find out, this here dog has been stealing chickens and raising Ned around this community for two, three months. Maybe longer, I guess. And he brought us into ridicule by getting a story into the Los Angeles papers that we ain't the men our fathers was. So a posse was organized. Hey, Al, keep awake. Well, as I was saying, they organized this posse. They go out and track this here dog. They tell me they caught him red-handed. I don't know whether they did or not. But instead of shooting the dog right then and there, this here young Blake gets up and makes a speech and says if they shoot the dog, he'll sue him. And you know how it is, boys. Money's been pretty tight. So the boys wasn't so sure. And they bring this dog in here for us to pass judgment on him. Now, if you think this dog's guilty, two, three things can happen. You can destroy the dog. You can give him another chance. Or you can turn him loose on another community and let him steal their chickens. Jake, what do you got to say? Gentlemen of the jury, I was in the posse that was chasing this dog. Why, he got some of my own chickens last week. I object! How do you know he got some of your chickens? You didn't see him. Well, I didn't exactly see him. Then how do you know? Wait a what? minute! This ain't no personal question between you gentlemen. This is a question for the court to decide with the help of the jury. Go ahead, Jake. Well, as I said before, I... We heard that. Start where you left off. No, it's nearly 10 o'clock. Well, I don't know where the dog stole the chicken. We don't out. care about that. Get on the stand, Jake. Charlie. Swear in the prosecuting attorney? Do as you're told, Charlie. Oh, all right. You saw me swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Help me out, sit down. Jake. You didn't see this dog steal your chickens, did you? No. Did you see this dog steal any chickens? No. Then what are we here for? I'll tell you what we're here for, Your Honor. Begging your pardon. I've been raising prize chickens and showing them, and I've lost between two and three hundred dollars worth of blooded stock, to say nothing of the loss of business in my other line. Why do you think this is the culprit? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Wait a minute. Jake, get off this stand. You come up here, Mr. Endicott. <laughs> now, what you got against this dog in particular, Mr. Endicott? Nothing. Except that this dog is destroying confidence in this township and community and destroying property and has cost us members of the Chicken Growers Association in the neighborhood of a thousand dollars. Did you ever stop to think what would happen if this vicious dog started after children? You might have something pretty serious on your hands. He's big enough to kill a man. What chance would a child stand with him if he went on the war path? Watch him. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. If I know anything about dogs, that one is bad. Well, I don't know much about dogs. Wife's got a cat. You heard the testimony by a couple of reputable witnesses. What are you going to do? May I have a witness, Your Honor? Yeah. Have you any dogs of your own? Yes, six. And none of them ever steal chickens. How do you know? Well, I've never seen them. Then how do you know this dog ever stole your chickens? Well... That's all. There you are, Judge. Mr. Blake, you ain't proved nothing. I have proved that none of the witnesses for the prosecution know definitely that this dog ever stole any chickens. The burden of proof lies with the prosecution. Any more wishes? Hey, wait. We ain't gonna listen to all you fellas. You talk all day. Just one of you. I'll talk to the boys, Judge. All right. Come up here, then. Talk.
swear the evidence you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you out and sit down. You betcha. Well, I poisoned a chicken, and I hung it right near my chicken coop. And this dog came along and, and stole that chicken and ran through my coops and over the fence. And that's the dog right there. I identify him. I wasn't more than 30 feet from him. Well, if the dog had a poison chicken, why ain't he dead? I don't know. Where'd you buy the poison? Right here in Running Springs at Boston's drugstore. Well, you better buy your poison somewhere else. See here, Judge. Listen, Your Honor. I've got just as good poison as you'll find any place else. Then why ain't the dog dead, Boscom? Well, I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. Who's on trial here? Me or the dog? Sit down, Boscom. Who's on trial, you or the dog? <laughs> Your Honor, if I may speak for a few minutes without interruption, I'll convince the jury and yourself that this dog is the victim of circumstantial evidence. I don't say that he hasn't stolen chicken, but I don't say that he has. And I'll tell you why I'm fighting for this dog. It isn't for any maudlin love of dogs or overgrown sympathy on my part. But I've got a reason, and a good reason. Let's hear it, Blake. Let's hear it. The day before yesterday, I was fishing in Miller's Creek. Did you get any? No, Your Honor. As I was saying, I was fishing in Miller's Creek. And I got all tangled up some way and slipped and knocked myself cold. I must have fallen face downward in the water. For the next thing I knew, this dog here, this vicious, bad-tempered animal, as you call him, had me by the collar and was dragging me to shore. By the time he got me on the bank, I had recovered and I stretched out a hand to pet him. Do you know what he did? He shrank back from my friendly gesture and dashed into the woods. Why? I'll tell you why. Because, Your Honor and gentlemen of the jury, this dog has a story. I don't know what it is. But I'm positive that he is instinctively a fine animal. If he isn't, why did he save me instead of outdistancing his pursuers? There must have been a moment when he was torn between two great instincts. The instinct for self-preservation, which even you gentlemen must admit is strong in both man and beast, and the instinct to save a life. The more unselfish, nobler instinct won. Why? Because this dog, deep down inside him, has the desire to love and serve a man. He saved my life. I'm trying to save his. Gentlemen, I ask you... Hey, you kids! Get out of that window. It's hot in here. Oh, Sonny. Where'd you get them fish? Up Miller's Creek. When'd you get them? This morning. All right, stand down, Stearns. Get off the stand! Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Blake, you've taken up a lot of this court's valuable time, and you ain't proved nothing except that you like dogs. Now, the prosecution has identified this animal as the one that stole the chicken. In my opinion, he's the dog that's done the damage, and I think he ought to be taken care of. like a vicious dog. Yeah, it looks like one to me. Just let me make one final plea. This thing never should have been brought to my court in the first place. Now that it is, and we've wasted the morning, go ahead and say what you got to say. But say it all. I'm closing this case in about five minutes. Say, you haven't told me how things were in Los Angeles. The climate is marvelous. Do tell. How unusual. <laughs> so long, Rip. Bye, Mary. Say, there must be something doing at the courthouse. Must be awful important, because the judge always fishes on Wednesday. Guess I'll mosey over. Want to come along, Mary? Not me. Bye. I do. And in closing, I want to impress upon you that you have no right to do anything to this dog. If we had an SPCA up here, you wouldn't have a chance. If you let me have the dog, I'll be responsible for him. Blake, you ain't got a chance. And neither's he. That's final. Blake, you go get that dog back here, dead or alive. Yeah, you're responsible for him. Yeah. Let them out to steal more chickens. Go on, get that dog go back on. here. All right, I'll go get him. 
Come on, Brad. There it goes. Come on. They're stealing horses now. Well, they'll bring them back. Hey, Sergeant! They took mine! Well, if they took your horse, they won't be back in no hour. If this court wasn't in recess, I'd fine you for that remark. It's derogatory or something. Doing, drinking again, Joe. Oh, I'm celebrating in advance. What for? You know that dog has been stealing all them chickens? I caught him. And as soon as they kill him, I get 25 bucks. How did you catch him? Uh, I know something. You know, you're partly in it. I really did it to get even with you and Blake. Ah, oh, but let's forget it. Oh, hmm? come on, Joe, tell me. Mm -mm, no, no. Please, Joe, please. Not me, honey, I'm too smart. Now, Joe, I don't think you understand how much I really like you. No. <laughs> what do you say we take a little walk? <laughs> Take it easy, Rep. I told the fellow that with the reason for this dog's behavior. Whoop, girl. Whoop. Whoop. Take it easy. Take it easy, girl. Take it easy. Take it easy. She's probably hungry. I'll bet she hasn't eaten since we got Captain. There's no need of her going hungry. The judge always carries the line. How about you, fella? You hungry, son? Boy, you're flirting with sudden death. What's that? Sounds like pups to me. What do you think of this? Three pups. <laughs> and another one over there.
Reb. I'm not going to take them back. You'd better if you want to go on living in Running Springs. I guess you're right. I gave them my word. Well, how are we going to pack these little fellows? We can't leave them here to starve. That to me. There's no packing problem ever stump Reb Collins. fishing baskets. Take it easy, Judge. I'll explain everything. Well, them baskets will take a lot of explaining. Now, gentlemen of the jury, I beg permission to introduce further evidence in this case. I found this dog, and I found his mate. She was caught in a trap, starving to death. In the absence of the mail, she'd gone on a forage for food. Now you know why possibly he stole chicken. So you're admitting it now. I said possibly, but I wouldn't blame him if he had. Especially if you were unable to distinguish right from wrong. I want you to consider this most carefully. If your wife was sick and hungry, and she just had a little baby, and it was a question of her life or a bottle of milk on somebody's doorstep, you'd take it, wouldn't you? What's a wife and a baby and a bottle of milk got to do with a dog stealing chickens? This dog has a wife. Fine little pup. Cute little fella, ain't he? Why don't you keep him? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, what do you think of that? Jake, how about you? Well... <laughs> Look that fellow. Hey, what are you trying to do? Bribe justice? All that little fellow wants is a chance, Judge. And he'll grow up to defend your home for you. Yeah, I know. These puppies can't help what their old man did. But that dog didn't need to steal. He could have come back to civilization instead of hiding out Raiding hen coops. He could have picked up some man glad to give him a home. No, I'm afraid that dog's just naturally a killer. He's got to die. There ain't no reason for what he's done. Yes, there is, Judge. I'll bank on it. But I don't know what it is. He's been forced to hate humans, but I don't know why. I can tell you why, Your Honor. Put Joe Gilmore on the stand. Hey, Joe. Go on up there. He wants you. All right. Swear him in. You solemnly swear that the evidence you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you got to sit down. You dirty skunk. Say, who are you calling a skunk? I beg your pardon, Your Honor. I'll continue with the witness if you don't mind. Did you take those two dogs out in the desert and let them out 50 miles from nowhere without food or water and muddle so they couldn't eat if they found food without a chance for life? Well, I never even saw the dogs before. Yes, you did, Joe Gilmore. Why lie about it? Mary, what you got to do about this? I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why Joe tried to torture the dogs. They never liked him. They belonged to his father. Mr. Gilmore had taken them in for a bad debt. And one day, Joe tried to put his arms around me, and I resisted him. Mary, are you sure you want to tell about this? Of course I want to tell it. Well, Joe got fresh, and Captain tried to take a hunk out of his neck. Did bite his hand, but it was to protect me. Is that true, Joe? She can't prove it. Oh, can't I? John, come here and put your arms around me. Huh? I said, come here and put your arms around me. Oh! Now, Joe. 
Joe, you come here and put your arms around me. Go on, Joe. Right. Sally! Whoopee! 